Concerns over the growing cost of education were a topic of discussion at this year's World Economic Forum in Davos. I spoke to Nicholas Dirks, Chancellor of the University of California, Berkeley, about the school's initiatives and how they are preparing future generations of students for a globally connected world. In fact, the first endowed chair that was set up in Berkeley in the late years of the 19th century was in East Asian studies. And that reflects an interest that's been there and uh, an exchange of students and faculty that's been there ever since. But on the other hand, uh, it's a university which has been based in Northern California, serving primarily, uh, at least traditionally, a population of Californian students. And, uh, and it, so it hasn't really taken on board the kind of global initiatives that other universities, NYU, my own uh, former university, Columbia University in, in New York, uh, and it hasn't, I think, uh, really made uh, the kind of global uh, preparedness uh, part of education as central as it should be. That's a great point because uh, Time Magazine recently ran a fairly extensive discussion regarding the next generation, uh, those 13, 14, 15, 16 year olds that are co coming into sort of their own and becoming adults. They will enter this education system. And a lot of folks are very critical saying that they simply just don't have the basic fundamentals or discipline to make it through a top four-year college. What do you say to those uh, folks that are worried about that? Well, it's, uh, there's a problem in terms of preparedness for a, a top quality, uh, high uh, intensity undergraduate education in, you know, I think uh, the United States, but around the world. East Asia does tend to produce uh, a better, uh, pr better prepared student. Uh, but we have a lot of challenges with K through 12 education in, uh, in the United States. So that's, that's a problem. But at the same time, when kids come, whether they've traveled or not, whether they've studied about other parts of the world or not, they're going to be entering into a world in which the global uh, connectedness is going to be at a, at a level and intensity that they're going to simply need to know more about the world. They're going to need to know more in the way of language, culture, history, but also about global finance. I'm going to ask you a question fairly, um, fairly blunt, so my apologies. But a lot of people are very critical of four-year degrees because the, the, the cost is so expensive, a lot of people say, it's not worth it. What do you say to that? Sure, a lot of people do, and in fact, there was even a panel here that was uh, uh, about the trade-off between uh, cost and you know, value in terms of uh, uh, what an undergraduate education would really provide. First of all, University of California, Berkeley has been, uh, is a public institution, uh, and it's actually a bargain relative to a lot of its peers. It's ranked routinely in the top five, the Shanghai Jiao Tang Index, in fact, lip ranks at number three in the world. As for the benefits of an education, there's no doubt. There's no doubt that students who graduate with, uh, uh, with a degree from a place like Berkeley are gonna do better in life. They're gonna have a better life, both in terms of their sense of the world and they're gonna do better in their life. Could you go into the details, uh, perhaps a little more detail about your partnerships and your, 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 your workforce as it moved closer towards China, not just the students coming to America, but also adding uh, curriculum to the classroom regarding China and also having perhaps partnerships in China where you send students uh, over there as well? Well, in fact, I'm going to be uh, traveling to Shanghai and, and, and Beijing in April to meet with various uh, leaders of universities in Beida, in Tsinghua, uh, and, uh, and, and Shanghai Jiao Tang. And I'm going to uh, try to advance on the kinds of things that already exist. We have summer programs. We have exchanges. Uh, we certainly have a lot of programs in, uh, uh, in, in Chinese economy, Chinese politics. But I think we need to do more. And so I've uh, given this a priority. I just joined Berkeley as of June. Uh, and so in my first year, I want to make sure that I get to go to China. And I'll be doing an extensive visit, uh, in particular, in, in Beijing at, at both Tsinghua and Beida. When you, uh, you talk to your colleagues around the world who are in similar positions of leadership and education to you, um, do you get a sense that enough is being done to ensure that there is access to education, dealing with income inequality, all those things ultimately tie into where you start and you are at the forefront essentially of the, the beginning of one person's career in education. That's right. No, we, uh, we, we all, uh, we've been meeting here actually at, uh, at the forum with uh, the Global University Leadership Forum that meets simultaneously. And so I've been talking with the presidents of Harvard and the University of Chicago and, uh, and, and other institutions. We're all deeply concerned about the cost of higher education. We're all committed to uh, making an education affordable and making sure there's access. 
same time, there is more demand for the education we offer than ever before. At Berkeley alone, we have had this year an increase of 10% in terms of freshman applications, up to 75,000 for only 5,000 slots. So it's, uh, it's clear there's a demand, uh, but what we need to make sure is that the best students will get in and then get the kind of financial aid they need to be able to take full advantage of that education.